Hey guys, my name is Max Convexty. Thanks for tuning in today. Have a good one planned for you today. It's called How Would the Mag 7 Yield Maxers Performed in 2022? So we now know how they perform in a bull market. All we have to do is look at the past couple of years. So now all we need to know is how they perform in a, in a bear market. All right, the caveats to this, uh, to my back test that I did, these ETFs did not exist in 2022. They didn't exist in 2020 either, but I'm also planning on testing these in 2020. Nevertheless, I attempt to control as many factors as I was able to. The Tasty Trade software is an improvement over their last gen back tester. It's still not perfect, but I simulated the trade, the cover call spread as close as I could to the strategy that Jay is currently using for yield max. However, remember, Jay could vary the strategy in the future. He could apply for a prospectus change. The back tester, also one other thing to remember, the back tester is not properly capitalized. It's not capitalized the way Jay is. So in a bad market, the back tester gives you worse than actual percentage results. They're overstated by twice, by double um, because of leverage. Of course, if you're ready for this kind of loss and it's less, you'll be pleasantly surprised. The profit and loss is correct, but I had to adjust the percentages to uh, reflect the reality of the way Jay capitalizes these trades. But anyway, with all those caveats, take all this with a huge grain of salt. We also had a split in Amazon and Tesla, and I had to make a manual adjustment. But having said that, I'm, I'm pretty proud of this. I worked on this for like 12 hours. Um, all right. So Apple's the best of the bunch, unfortunately. The reason I say unfortunately is because it's the best of the bunch. And his parent asset, Apple, was down 28.37. It's showing a return on used capital of 50.55, but that's a leverage return. So the actual return is half of that is negative 25. So that's about what we'd expect, negative 25, buy and hold down about 10% more. That's why I do these buff. That's why I do the buffer report uh, every day. We look, you know, that's that's what we're trying to find uh, on a bad day. How much of the, of the downside of these things catch? And I'd say 70 to 80 to 90 is about somewhere somewhere in the kind of typical range. And anyway, in this case, they caught 90% of the downside. Now, the reason that the only reason you do covered call strategies or one of the main reasons a person would is to gather a yield. Well, this had an average premium over the, the 2022 of 179 a week. Well, that comes to uh, $8,000. All right, the use capital we know is low by half, so that's $8,000 on $12,000. That's about a 70% dividend. That's very nice. Great year, Apple. Then we have Microsoft. Microsoft also had a nice dividend. Now, Microsoft is down a little bit more than Apple in 2022. It was down 32%. So if you buy and held the stock, you'd be down 32%. If you did the option strategies, the covered calls, the synthetic covered call spread, and but you were fully capitalized, you'd be down half of 58.87%. So once again, we're catching 80 or 90% of the downside, but we have a little buffer. Of course, the reason we do this isn't for the, the NAV, it's for this right here, this average premium, $310. Now, granted, we didn't hold down to any of it because it was a bad year, but that's the, the amount of premium we sold. That comes to 13963 Jay just takes the amount that he sells and pays it out. So that's why it's pretty easy to figure it out because he, he pays the whole thing out. So if he was trading this year, would have had 13,000, call it $14,000 worth of payouts right there on about $27,000 worth of capital. So that one pays right around 50%. I could saw, I wrote all these on a sheet at the end. We'll look at the exact numbers here just a little bit. So Amazon's pretty ugly. You know, the parent asset was down, call it 50%. So return on the, the option strategy, return on use capital was down about 38 percent 38 39 percent so uh a pretty good size buffer there actually a bigger buffer than the other ones but of course the parent was down more so as far as the yielding situation goes amazon this this strategy made 1500 a week in premium which comes to 63,000 over the course of a year now the bad news is it took him 400 and uh 25,000 to do this worth of capital to put this on, but you put 63,000 out of 400, still pretty good, you know, still pretty good. Then we have Google. Now, Google's parent was down 71.73%. Boy, that's something else, isn't it? That's, that's quite a bit. The option strategy was down about 45, 46%, something like that. 
the average premium from the Google trading strategy covered calls, the synthetic covered call spread was about 1400, which comes to about 58,000 for the year. Now it cost them about $260,000 of capital or more, 270, 274 actually to, to do this trade right here. So that's about 22, 23%, something like that. Like I say, we'll check in on all those in a second. Here's Meta. Meta was down uh, 61 point, call it 62%. The option strategy was down about 37%. So a nice little buffer there. Average premium on this one was $300 a week, which comes to about 13,000, 13, 14,000 a year, something like that. It took $42,000 worth of capital to finance this trade, though. So that, I think, is about 30%. All right. And now we have Tesla. Now, Tesla was down 71.73%. The option strategies were down 47, 48%. The premium gathering strategies, they sold about $1,800 worth of premium. It comes to $75,000 for the year. Now, unfortunately, it tied up $156,000 of capital to do this with. Still, they made a pretty nice premium. And then there's the GOAT, NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA, even the mighty NVIDIA was down 50%, lost its half its value. The option selling strategy, the covered call spread, lost about 32%. The premium these guys are going for is $441 a week, which comes to about nineteen twenty thousand dollars a year on about $33,000 worth of capital. So this is 28% or something. Well, we're going to look at all the percentages and see how close I got. All right. Um, but that, that's not great. You know, are y'all prepared? All right. 2022 performance, Apple down 25, parent down 28, the Amazon strategy down 38, parent down 49, Google option strategy down 48, the uh, buy and hold down 73, Microsoft option strategy down 30, buy and hold down 36, NVIDIA option strategy down 32, buy and hold down 50, Meta's option strategies down about 39 option or the buy and hold just buying and holding meta stock was down 61.59 tesla stock was down 71 percent where the option strategy bled about 48 percent okay on the yields apples was 72 percent the second highest was tesla at 62 and a half percent i'm sorry it's actually uh facebook at 63 percent then tesla at 62 percent then nvidia came in at 59 percent Microsoft 48.14, Google 21.16, Amazon 17%. This one could save you. Do you guys have any of this one? Why triple Q? This is an inverse fund and I back tested it and it did really, really well because this fund sells covered puts and uh, a covered put in the QQQs is a short position, but it's also a yielding position. This could hedge the downside or potentially help the downside. So this is the 2022 results for Y triple Q. Y triple Q's performance for the year was up 70% total return, while the parent asset, which is the QQQs, were down 31 or 33.7% on the year. The yield for Y triple Q was 23.75. Okay, before I get any comments, that 70% looks super high to me also. Or let's just say this, I adjusted it manually to 25%. There's no way if the QQQ was down 33% that the inverse covered call fund be, should outperform on the downside. So I'm just putting in the typical buffer. It's going to do a little bit better by about the same amount of better that these do. You know, the parents down 33%. Now, this is an inverse fund, so it's going to be up, but by some fraction less than 33. Let's call it 25. So I put 25 in there. 25% total return. And remember, it could have, and it probably did a lot better. I just, you know, want to want to be as fair as possible. So I'm going to use a 25% total return. But of course, uh, and then the parent total return stays the same. And then the yield is 23.75. Okay. So if you, if you did the MAG-7, and you didn't mess with YQQQ without the hedge, 
you'd be down 36.92% on the year, but you would have received 44% yield. And it's not the worst thing ever because the parents that you're invested in, all those parent assets were down 52%. So you're, you know, you have a, you have a buffer there, just like we'd expect. If you add in Y triple Q, not at 72, that not at that total return. If you add in Y triple Q at 25 and you use one eighth of it, I just used equal parts, the mag seven, and then I threw in the Y triple Q into the mag seven and made them one eighth each. So 12 and a half percent each. Then it, it improves your total return by about 20%, even with the lower number, even with the 25% return. So you're only down 29% if you hedged, if you bought one eighth of this inverse fund in 2022. It made your parent performance a little better because this parent actually went up. But anyway, that's fine. The parent, asked, the parent performance doesn't really matter that much. I was just wanting to show it to compare. Um, and then the yield, it takes the yield down a little bit because you added in one eighth of this uh, of Y triple Q. Their yield is 23, which is the which is on the lower end of, of this. So it brings the average down a few points. So I'm doing this all this stuff for me. This is for my portfolio. I'm not telling you guys to invest in anything or to buy Y triple Q or whatever. I've been testing this. I've been doing back tests of one form or another um, for six months or a year. This is the first one that I've, you know, made slides or for maybe the second or third one that I made slides on and put out there. But uh, the, the what I was trying to find for my own self, the question I'm trying to answer is, can I sit through this kind of drawdown? Money managers, people like Jay Pestricelli, people that manage money professionally for a living, They'll tell you the right thing to do is nothing most of the time. That most people mess up their accounts by by seeing the market go down and panicking and trying to get out and then selling at the bottom. And then it turns around and goes up and then they buy back in and they've cost themselves money. A good financial planner will tell you to make a plan in advance. Stick with it. That's that's part of, you know, Jay on his podcast. If you ever listen to Jay and Derek Moore on their podcast, Broken Pie Chart, they're both wealth managers. And they always talk about that wealth management is boring and the right thing to do most of the time is nothing. And most of the time or lots of the time they're talking their their customers out of doing something rash. That's kind of what their job is, is kind of to be the buffer. I want my portfolio to be ready for anything. So, yes, I do will be able to sit through a 29 or a 36 percent drawdown, but I would rather sit through a 29 percent drawdown. I'm even thinking about upping that percentage to 20% of the inverse. In fact, I'm going to put on 20% of that inverse in my own, own fund today, in my own, uh, in my own account today. I want to be ready for anything. I want to know what kind of drawdown to expect if we hit another bear market. Also, remember, there's different types of bear markets. 2020 was very different than 2022. Like I said, I'm going to back test 2020 next. I'm going to, we're going to look back and see how Defiance would have done in 2020. All right. Remember, this is good advice for me and my family, I feel, but it may or may not be good advice for you and your family. But somebody that does know is somebody that advocates for you. So that's why you should get a fee based financial planner, in my opinion. Don't use high yielders for more than 20 percent of your portfolio, though. In the meantime, here's my general advice before you get a planner. Keep these to 20 or 20 percent or less, all of them together. If you have 10 percent Tesla and you know, 10% FEPI, that's fine. You're done. 20%. That's fine. The rest should be stocks and bonds. That's the way I do mine. I mean, it's up to you. You you know, you do you. But um, remember, these are only to be used if you really need the income. These ETFs are effective tools for turning equity from the stock market into spendable income. But they are not effective tools at growing wealth. So if you don't need the income and you're using these, you're leaving money on the table, in my opinion. All right, guys, I appreciate you all for being here. You have a great day. Thank you very much.